Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, I've got something very special to show you, something that I've been keeping a little secret for a while now. So this was recorded way back in November. I've even got Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen cooking a birthday cake because it's my daughter's birthday. Um, it's not really Gordon Ramsay, by the way. So I am going to make over this desk. I've been keeping this desk in storage for a special occasion, and I feel like today is that special occasion. I'm going to use a brand new silk colour to give this piece a fresh look and hopefully it will turn out how I envisage it in my head. So stay tuned to find out how I do it and what colour I'm going to show you. So this is how it started out. You can see that it's in fairly good condition. It's got a few scratches on the top there which should be easy enough to sort out. The bit of the trim came off when I was taking it out of my vehicle. Again, very easy to sort out. Thankfully, it didn't damage the actual trim itself. It just kind of popped off. And just the usual wear and tear you'd expect. This is actually mahogany veneer. Um, and some of the veneer was missing in corners and edges, but nothing major. I originally thought the hardware was original. Um, but when I took it off, I realised that there was other hardware holes, which led me to believe it's probably not original. But I wanted to keep them because they suit the piece and they're lovely brass handles. So I popped those to one side to clean them up and pop them back on once I'd finished. I always put mine in a pot so that I don't lose them. I have forgotten the amount of times that I have taken handles off and then lost just one screw. Um, so I always try and put them in a pot or in a bag. The trim just went back on with a little bit of wood glue and then I just tacked it in place just to hold it. So that was a nice easy repair just to pop that straight back on. And I'm going to limit the amount that I chatter on this video because um, when I recorded the voiceover for this, um, I'm actually suffering from a really bad cough, which is not something that you want to hear on a voiceover. So I am just going to keep it short and sweet on this one. So once all the repairs were done, I then gave it a clean with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. Even if your piece looks clean and you think that there's no need to clean it, I would always advise for you to clean your piece before you paint it as an absolute minimum. Mainly because there is also things that are built up on that surface that can resist paint, such as cleaning products and polishes. They can cause issues if you don't remove them. Dixie Bell's White Lightning, which is what I'm using, gets rid of all of those things because it's a degreasing cleaner. Once you've cleaned your piece with Dixie Bell's White Lightning, just make sure to give it a really good rinse with clean water afterwards to get rid of any product residue that might be still on the surface, again, which may cause issues with the paint adhering. If you watched any of my, my other videos, I'll get my words out. If you have watched any of my other videos, you will know that I do usually scuff sand most of my pieces prior to painting. And silk is absolutely no exception. So if you've never used silk mineral paint before, you may or may not know that you do need to scuff sand your piece beforehand. And this is simply because all in one paints, such as silk mineral paint, which does have that built in top coat, and the built-in stain blocking primer they just require um, a little bit more of a grippy surface in order to adhere to so chalk paints chalk mineral paints those kind of things they're a little bit more forgiving in terms of what you can paint over the top of so usually you are okay to just clean your piece with dixie bell's white line i'm just getting attacked here by the dogs um as soon as i get on the floor to clean or sand or paint they all just, they just want my attention. Um, maybe should have edited this bit out, but this is, this is reality for you folks. There we go, we're back to it. Um, so, as I was saying, silk mineral paint does require you to scuff sand your piece beforehand. It's good practice to do that anyway, i found. I mean, I've been painting furniture for seven or eight years now, and that's always been my practice, even if I'm using a chalk based paint or whatever but silk mineral paint the advice is to get the most out of your paint and to make sure that paint is adhering to the surface whoa that was a close-up to make sure you get the most out of your paint and to make sure that paint is adhering to the surface the advice from Dixie Belle is to scuff sand your piece prior to painting 
what I'm doing now is just using a little bit of wood filler to fill in those little bits where I said the veneer was peeling away. Because I've cleaned and sanded it, it's now become apparent where those pieces need to be filled in. So I'm just going around and making sure that that is done. Now, for the more intricate places that need sanding, I have this kit that I've recently bought off Amazon and it's made up of kind of like rubber profiles, like all different shapes like this. And what you do is you get a piece of sandpaper, you wrap it around whichever profile you think you need and that gives you that exact kind of shape to fit in the crooks and crevices. Crooks, nooks and crannies, that's what I was trying to say. I was trying to say crevices and nooks and it came out crooks but that's not the word, that's not the right word. So it fits in all the nooks and crannies, and it, this is actually a 10 out of 10. So for all the flat surfaces, I use my electric sander, but obviously I've got to get into all of the detail on this as well. So these came in really handy, really, really impressed with these. And then for the carved detail on the panels, there's two of them, I'm using a miniature wire brush. Again, I get these off Amazon and I'm just gonna basically scuff sand with a wire brush. It's a very soft wire brush, so it's not gonna damage at all. For the top, I started hand sanding and then I realized I needed my electric sander just to get those scratches out, the deeper scratches. And the top was actually a bit of a fail, which turned into a win. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. So my initial plan with the top was to just scuff out the worst of the damage and then go over the top with no paint gel stain, which is what I'm doing now, because you can use no paint gel stain over the top of existing finishes. I've seen many people do it, and once you top coat, it becomes apparent that the scratches have completely gone. So this is the second coat of no paint gel stain going on, and that was very quickly ended because I fast forwarded it because there's no point showing you what I did. Basically, there was two coats of no paint gel stain and then I top coated it and left it and I expected it to be brilliant, but it wasn't. And I'll explain why later on in the video. So this is the colour that I'm going to use. It's called Everglades. It's one of the nicest shades of green I think I've ever laid my eyes on. As soon as I saw it, I knew that I wanted to do an absolutely outstanding special piece in this particular colour. I absolutely love it. I'm a lover of all greens, but this green is very unique. I think you could use it on mid-century pieces. I think you could use it on antique pieces like I'm doing now. I think you could use it on a variety of styles and finishes. It's such a gorgeous shade and I really wanted to use it with that darker top to contrast against that kind of really beautiful, um, I'm going to say mushy pea green but it's not really mushy pea green it's more it's way prettier than that you'll notice that i'm not priming this piece it's mahogany it's a bleeder and i'm not priming because that's that's because silk all in one mineral paint has got a built-in stain blocking primer built into the paint you can use a primer if you want to dixie bell's primers are compatible with silk mineral paint but if you don't want to you don't have to this covers beautifully as well. This has obviously had two coats because I just wanted to make sure that I had full coverage. Also, we're going over mahogany here. So again, two coats is going to give me the equivalent of two coats of stain blocking primer. So, but it, it covered absolutely amazing. The coverage of this colour, considering it's a fairly light green, is absolutely phenomenal. I used a combination of a roller and a paintbrush to apply this. The roller more for the flatter areas, the paintbrush for the more kind of detailed areas. You can use both with this paint. It rolls amazingly well. It also brushes amazingly well and it also sprays very well as well. Although I am not a paint sprayer, I don't own one and I've never really done it. Um, although I have seen people use silk with a paint sprayer and it goes on beautifully. So whatever your preference is as to how you get paint on the furniture this will work this silk will work with it it works beautifully i just prefer a paintbrush because that's what i'm used to and that's what i've always used um, and as you can see i am not taking the doors off and that is because i now know most times you take doors off very old pieces like this they never go back on these doors were very level and they hung perfectly there was no catching, there was no issues, 
So for that reason, I did not take the doors off. Because this piece is kind of a rustic-y kind of piece, it's got some age, it's got some age-related marks on it as well, which I think is part and parcel and character of the piece. I'm going to slightly distress this, very, very lightly. And if you do want to distress silk, I would suggest you do it sooner rather than later. So I applied two coats of this, left it overnight to dry, and then distressed it the following day. I would say if you're going to distress silk, probably try and do it within maybe a week, any after, any time after that, and it starts to get really kind of hard. So most water-based products, including silk mineral paint, take 30 days to cure, and over that time, the paint is basically getting harder on the surface, the water is evaporating, and your product is essentially curing. As, as that happens, it gets more and more durable, and um, it becomes harder to distress. So that's why I say do it sooner rather than later. Like I mentioned, I'm just doing this ever so slightly because it's a one color finish and I find this is gonna highlight the details really nicely. And back to the top. I told you that I hadn't finished with the top. Basically what happened is as it had dried, um, it, you could still see the places where I had sanded the scratches out I could still see them, they were still visible to me, um, and I wanted this piece to be absolutely perfect, so there was no other choice but to sand it all off and start again. So the beast of a sander came out, this is the same sander that I always use, but it's got a slightly different attachment to it. If you want to see more about my sander, because I get probably asked more questions than that, than anything else that I use, I will link the video um, to the top right of the screen now so that you can go and have a look at the different attachments. So it's exactly the same setup as usual. It's just got a rotary, a ro an, an orbital. That's the one I'm looking for, not rotary. It's got an orbital sander attached to it as opposed to the normal kind of rectangular shape that I use, which I'm using now, by the way. So the orbital one is much more of a beast and took off that existing finish in absolutely no time at all. Then the rectangular one I just went over the top of with a slightly um, less abrasive grit. And then I'm just taking the dust off and giving it a clean here with just plain water and a microfiber cloth. So I just let that water dry and we're going for take two. Take two on the top, exactly the same process. I'm using no paint gel stain in the color espresso for the deepest brown, but this time I'm going straight over that wood that I sanded back. So there's no finish on this. The first time I went over it, I was going over the existing finish. This means that it's gonna soak into the wood grain a lot quicker and dry down a lot quicker as well. So I'm gonna do two coats of this color leave it to dry thoroughly in between. So this is the second coat going on. This is just gonna give me kind of a much kind of richer look and just make sure I've got full coverage of the color. It will dry quicker, obviously, if you're going onto raw wood than if you're going over existing finish. But nevertheless, just make sure you are leaving it to dry thoroughly in between coats. And then you can just top coat as normal. So my favorite top coat is Terra Tough, and it's a top coat that's been specifically designed to be used with Terry clay paint, but you can also use it on all of the other things that Dixie Bell sell as well, including no paint gel stain. So I'm using it with a foam and dandy brush here, and this is the largest size they do. And as you can see, I am just getting that top coat on. I'm not being kind of precious about it at the second. And then once it's on, I get my foam and dandy brush and I just move in one direction and make sure all of the top coat is kind of laying really smooth and there's no big lumps of it anywhere or no kind of build up of it or any texture. And this technique for me gets absolutely flawless results every single time. Because you're using a foam brush, not a paintbrush with bristles, you don't get any streaky marks or anything like that. Once that first coat's dry, I then do a second coat in the opposite direction. So the first coat went on from left to right. This time I'm going from front to back. And again, although this doesn't have bristles, obviously I'm still working in a direction. And because top coats reflect light, this is kind of like a, it's kind of got like a satiny kind of sheen this finish has. 
it's going to reflect light. So any direction that you put this, it's going to catch the light. So if I did every single top coat in the same way, every single layer of top coat in the same way, it would probably become apparent. This reduces the kind of streakiness. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Then again, the third and final coat of Terra Tough. I said I wasn't going to talk much during this, didn't I? But that's, that was a complete lie. I'm going again from left to right. So by just alternating the direction in which you put your top coats, you are going to reduce the streakiness. The interior was kind of a bit red and also not that appealing. So I'm using No Pain Gel Stain in the same colour that I did the top, which is Espresso. Again, I'll link all the products in the description below as always. I'm going to use a little bit of Big Mama's Butter. These are both oil-based products, which means I can mix them absolutely fine with no problem. And this is going to give me a wax stain. So it's not a stain, it's not a wax, it's kind of a wax stain, but it's an oil-based wax stain. I'm going to mix them together to make a paste, and then I'm just, I did the whole of the interior of the piece. There's no point me showing you inside the cupboard, because I can't get a camera in there, so I'll just show you the door. But you can see it's just tinting that redness down a little bit, so that it matches the kind of tone that I used on the top of the piece. You can apply this in pretty much any way you like. I'm using a chip brush because I wanted to get the little kind of edges as well. But I've seen people do this with a sock or with a rag. Um, you can also do it with an applicator pad. Um, pretty much any way you can put it on, really, whichever your personal preference is. Mine is a chip brush or a rag sometimes, just depends. I just find it easier with a brush sometimes. So I'm just painting it on all over. And then the most important bit when you are doing this, when you're using this product is you must take the excess off because you've mixed it with a wax and waxes are designed to be kind of applied and then buffed. If you leave it, it'll just go sticky. It'll be a sticky, horrible mess. It won't dry down properly. It will remain tacky. Um, and it'll just be an absolute nightmare. So if you are ever using a wax product, whether that be a water-based wax or an oil-based wax, when you've left it on the surface for around about 20 minutes or half an hour or whatever the advice is for that particular product, you've got to make sure that you buff it off. So I just used uh, a microfiber cloth or a shop cloth or a rag, lint-free rag, whatever you've got to hand, and then you just take the excess off. This way, a little bit of the product stays on the surface. My stain has been absorbed into that kind of ready tone. And it's also nourished the wood as well because I've used Big Mama's Butter, which has got ingredients in it, which nourishes wood and conditions wood. So this is just going to take the excess off and stop it from feeling sticky and tacky and just give it a really nice shine. Considering I've had a pretty bad cough, I think I've done all right for the voiceover. Here's a few close-ups of the finished piece. I'd love to know what you think of this colour. Do you love it as much as me? Would you ever use it? I'm definitely going to be using it going forward. I absolutely love it. There's a little bit of the top. The second attempt came out absolutely spot on, perfect. And here is the finished piece. Hope you like the video. Make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye.